Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about domain and range of exponential functions. So just as a reminder, we hopefully remember that domain is all possible x func values. And range is all possible y values. Okay, so let's look at an example. We're going to start off with the parent function for exponential growth. This is y equals 2 to the x power in case you wanted to know the equation. But let's do the domain and range. So domain goes with the x-axis. So I'm going to be looking at this axis here that goes side to side. Now, if you look at this picture, and I wanted to go side to side, I would say it ends about right there, but that's a trick question because of the arrows. The arrows mean that it's gonna keep going forever and ever in both directions. So we could say that the domain of this is negative infinity because of this arrow is less than x is less than and this arrow is going to keep going forever in the positive side, so positive infinity. But you guys know that better as all real numbers. And then for range, this time we want to go on the y-axis. So we're going to be looking at this axis, the one that goes up and down. So if you look at the top, that arrow, again, it means that it's gonna keep going forever and ever and ever, and since it's pointing up, I know it's gonna go all the way to positive infinity. But this arrow on the left is pointing towards the left. It's not actually going down. It's just gonna keep going sideways forever and ever and ever. So this line here would just keep going this way but it never actually goes down, it just keeps going sideways. So if you look at that on the y-axis, that is actually the number zero. But remember that y equals zero is our asymptote here. Remember we talked about that when we did characteristics? That means that it's never going to cross that line, it's never gonna touch that line. So our range would be zero, is less than y is less than positive infinity. But anytime you have a positive infinity or a negative, you could just leave that out entirely and just put the numbers. So zero is less than y. But then again, that kind of looks weird. We always have the variable first. So if I switch this around and put y first and then the zero, then the symbol in the middle needs to flip. So our range is y is greater than zero. And our domain was all real numbers. Okay, let's look at the other parent function for exponentials, exponential d, exponential growth, and a. So this time when it goes down. So again, looking at domain, which is left to right, so x-axis, so I'm going left to right, both sides of the function have arrows, which means that it's gonna keep going forever this direction, and it's gonna keep going forever this direction. So we know that to be all real numbers. Then for range, this time we're looking at the y-axis, so we're going up and down. On the top, the arrow means that it's gonna keep going forever and ever towards the top. But this arrow on this side is not gonna go down, it's just gonna keep going forever and ever sideways. So this is just like the one that we saw before where the range is y is greater than zero because of this zero here. It never crosses that line. So you'll notice that the first example, second example, exponential decay, have the same domain and range. It's always gonna be like that for exponential functions, whether it's tall or short, 
as long as it has arrows. So that's important. As long as it has arrows, this will always be domain and range. Okay, but what about if it doesn't have arrows? So for example, this one, it has endpoints. So this time, you can't just say all real numbers for domain because the arrows are not pointing to negative infinity and positive infinity. These have endpoints. So for domain, we always look at the x-axis. So I'm going to start left to right. So this left endpoint hits at negative 3, and this endpoint hits at positive 1. So those are the two numbers that I need to use. Negative 3 is less than x is less than positive 1. But I'm not done yet because this endpoint is colored in. It's solid. But this endpoint is open. It's not colored in. So what does that do for our symbols? Well, the one that's colored in gets an underline. So since it's at negative 3, that symbol gets an underline. So that would be less than or equal to. Then for range, we're going to look at the y-axis. You always do smallest to biggest. So when you're looking at the y-axis, it's bottom up. So our bottom is here and our top is here. So the top, I can easily tell it's at 1600. But at the bottom, there is no number there. But you have to use the measurements of the graph. If it takes two squares for it to be 200, then one square should be only 100. So for our range, we start at the smaller number. So 100 is less than, because that circle is open, y. And then over here, this circle is colored in. So it's going to be less than or equal to 1,600. Let's do another example. So domain and range again, but on this one, I put this as an example because one side has an arrow, one side has an endpoint. So that is going to change how we write our domain and range. So let's start with domain, which is the x-axis. So smallest to biggest, the small, so that would be left to right. It starts at negative 1. Then this arrow, if I were to follow it, looks like it's hitting at 3, but... Arrow means that it's going to keep going, so it doesn't actually stop there. So you can't think of it that way. Arrow means that it's going to keep going all the way to positive infinity. So you could write negative 1 is less than x, or less than or equal to x because of the colored in circle, is less than positive infinity. But like I said before, if you ever have positive infinity, you don't need to write that part. So this would just turn into x is less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, then for range. So range is y, so we're going to be going bottom up. Let's erase some of this so it's out of the way. Okay. So bottom up. So the bottom is about right here. And then at the top, again, because it has an arrow, you're automatically going to do infinity. And since it's pointing up, it has to be positive infinity. OK, so what number is that at the bottom? So be very careful. It looks like each box equals 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. But this is not right at the box. It's in between. See that? So I would call this 1.5 is less than or equal to because that endpoint is colored in. Y is less than or equal to positive infinity. But when you have an infinity, you could just leave that off. So it would just be Y is greater than or equal to 1.5. And last example. Okay, again with two endpoints. So domain is x. So we're going to be looking side to side. The lowest number is negative 3. 
the highest number is positive one. And if you look at those endpoints, both of them are open. So we're not gonna have any underlines in our symbols. It's only gonna be negative three is less than x is less than positive one. For range, same thing, but this time we're looking at the y-axis. So at the bottom, it's here, which would be zero, and the top is at eight. Since both endpoints are open, our range is going to be zero is less than y is less than eight. Okay, guys, make sure you email me or message me on Google Classroom if you have any questions over this.